Welcome to the Land Geek Podcast, your resource for information and tips to making money by buying and selling land. Let the Land Geek show you how to make a passive income by working smart, not working hard. Learn strategies and tricks to make money buying and selling raw land today. And here is the man that's going to help you do that, the Land Geek. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www thelandgeek.com and today is super special because if you're driving pullover you're probably going to want to take notes this guest is I'm going to put on my anchorman voice a really big deal because she can literally with one platform transform your business and your marketing and your networking and is a true expert so I want to introduce everyone to Donna Serdula. She is the LinkedIn makeover. She loves LinkedIn. She is the author of the popular book, LinkedIn Makeover, Professional Secrets to a Powerful LinkedIn Profile. And back in 2009, she decided to break free from corporate America and set out on her own path. Donna, that's a big deal. What we'll talk about that. <laughs> she started Vision Board Media with the goal to help business and individuals leverage the internet in their quest to market themselves. Everyone needs to be marketing themselves. Everyone should be their own personal brand. We're going to talk about that. Donna is the foremost expert in LinkedIn profile optimization. I have no idea what that means. She founded LinkedInMakeover.com, where she helps individuals from around the world brand themselves successfully using LinkedIn. She's appeared on some very small uh, media outlets probably you've never heard of, like Sirius XM Radio, NBC, and other news outlets. But, you know, let's face it. The Land Geek Podcast is probably going to be her biggest platform that she's been on. <laughs> Donna Serdula, how are you? <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Thank you for that wonderful introduction. I loved it. And the Land Geek is, is I, I have a feeling this is going to be my proudest moment ever. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I probably. I mean, look, Sirius XM, I don't know. They have a few listeners. But probably not as big as the, podca- as the uh, Land Geek Podcast. And, and my, my niche community of land investors. But um, Donna, what's going on? Like, how did you become this, you know, person in 2009 in corporate America and then just, you know, wake up one day, you know what? LinkedIn. That's- well, you know, it, it's, it's crazy. I, I come from a very uh, competitive sales environment. I used to make uh, 75 phone uh, cold calls before noon <laughs> every day. And um, I, I just, it was one of those, I had a moment, I had an epiphany. I was cold calling, I had hit upon this amazing prospect, uh, and I, I want, and I wanted to learn everything that I could about this prospect after being able to set up a, a call with them, a, you know, a, a meeting. And it was, it was funny because I remember, you know, I wanted to learn everything that I could so I could go in there and really sell them. And as I was Googling this guy's name, I realized he was probably Googling me. <laughs> and, <laughs> right. and I had never Googled myself. So I, I, I backspaced, you know, his name. I put in my name. I hit enter. And the very first result that I found, the only pertinent result, quite honestly, was my LinkedIn profile. And it was a uh, copy and paste of my resume from a few years earlier. And it was dry. It was boring. It made it look like I was a job seeker since it was my resume. And, uh, you know, I looked at it and, and I realized, oh, my gosh, this is how I chose to present myself. You know, this is, this is the best that I could do. And, and I thought, here's this chance to really showcase who I was and how I could help this person. And instead, I just copied and pasted my resume. And it, that was my epiphany that, you know, professional branding is, is important, especially in this, in this Google world. And, you know, the successful people are the people who are, who are easily found. Um, and so at that moment, I, I realized you've got to optimize, you've got to optimize your profile. And, and what LinkedIn optimization means is, is really branding yourself online, choosing how you want to be perceived and, and telling a story that's engaging uh, that gets people interested in who you are and, and what you deliver and how you can help them. And that's what I did at that moment. And I had tremendous amounts of success. As soon as I did that, I started to find that calls went easier. 
Um, I was building rapport faster and earlier, uh, and and I was able to make sales all that much more easier. And uh, it was you know shortly after that 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 I decided, all right, well, rather than, you know, uh, line someone else's pocket, let, let, let me go out here and do it for myself. And that's what I did. Right. So, and you've, you've built this up and you started in 2009, right? Yeah. From, yeah. from, so let's say you had zero, was, zero LinkedIn followers and zero Twitter followers in 2009. Uh, no, no, I, w- I wouldn't just say zero. I, I, I didn't have a lot, but I, t- I certainly didn't have zero. <laughs> but I, I think um, I, I think I had about a thousand. Okay, so uh, a thousand Twitter followers and maybe maybe 150 <laughs> LinkedIn followers. <laughs> now, if we combine your your LinkedIn followers and your Twitter followers, Donna Stardula, you're like a small country. Um, I mean, that's how many people. Are, yeah, I think are I'm bigger than community. Rhode Island. No, I'm no you, you know, wait, but that's that's probably not an exaggeration. I mean, you're huge. How does that happen? Well, you know what? The way the way it works, at least with with LinkedIn, um, you you want it, it's really kind of strange to say this, Mark. You know, because I came of age and in, in, in my career believing that you wanted to keep a lot of your stuff to yourself, and you know, you don't you don't consult unless you're getting paid. And I and I realized, you know, that that's not true at all. And so what I had decided very early on was I was going to share as much of the information that I had as possible. And and I, I really do seek to educate and add value as much as I can. And and when you give freely, um, it's amazing the people that want to come and learn and, and hear you. And that's how I've been able to build up the following that I have. It's really by educating and, and providing value and, and always giving. I love it. Yeah. I mean, that's – and that, that credo really applies, I think, to every business because I talk a lot about this on the podcast is building your list so that you can mm-hmm. go to your community – of people that now consider you an expert in land investing, email them a promotion, and now you have a, a channel that you've created of people that know, like, and trust you that yeah. you can then sell land to. Mm-hmm. So given that, how can we use LinkedIn to build our list and sell more properties? How wow. would you How would you advise uh, the community to do that using LinkedIn because you know the flavor of the month and I mean the flavor of the year has been Facebook, Facebook, Facebook. I can yeah. drill down. I can get you know such great demographics. I know everything about this group, and if I get my keywords right, I can really start focusing on building my list through Facebook. But I think LinkedIn might be an even better way to go. But I don't know. You tell me. Well, it you know it's it depends on who your demographic demographic is and, and who your audience is. Okay, here, here, audience here's our demographic. Per- I'm sorry, say it again? Here, here's our demographic. We want people that can afford to invest in land. They believe already, we don't have to convince them, that raw land is a good asset to buy. And I, I will tell you, I don't know if you saw this, and I am hope to goodness I'm getting the, the number correct, um, but it just came out that 40% of LinkedIn users make more than 100000 a year. Wow. So... It's it's a really good demographic. It's full of professionals. It's it's full of people who have money, uh, and people who are business minded. So LinkedIn is a really great demographic, um, and you know it is a channel. It's it's just one it's one network, but it is your network, and and ultimately, you know, for me, I think the very first thing most people most people all people should do is they need to look at their LinkedIn profile. Because that is who you are. That's how you choose to represent yourself. All right, I'm gonna, and, go, to, I'm gonna go to my LinkedIn profile. All right, let's let's go to your LinkedIn profile together. Okay. <laughs> and and the thing is, it's only for Frontier Properties. It's not for Land Geek. And I and yesterday, because I knew you were gonna be on the podcast, I tried to log in as Land Geek and, and make a new profile just to kind of like, okay, can I impress Donna? And I couldn't even do it. Well, here's the thing. You can only have one profile. Um, so even if you have, I mean, you can have numerous company profiles, but, you know, as a, for a personal profile, you, you can only have one, one per person. Okay. I, I think I'm a mess on LinkedIn, but you tell me. So when you look at this, 
you really want to say to yourself, if a person looks, are they going to be impressed? Are they going to feel confident and comfortable in my expertise? Are they going to look at this and are they going to say, yeah, you know, I can understand what, how this person is going to help me. Because you always have to remember, it's not necessarily what you want to say, but it's what that other person, your target audience needs to hear, right? Because everyone's always thinking, what's in it for me? And, and so I look at this and to me, I don't know how, how you could even, if you could help me. Uh, you know, I just see that you're a managing director and you specialize in acquisition of raw and developed land. Um, you're a managing member of Land Geek Enterprises. It, you know, it's, it's very much, it's, it's not a, I'm not going to tell you it's a bad profile, but it's, it's, it's certainly not optimized because it doesn't tell your unique story and how you can help people. Yeah, I have thick skin. You can say, you know what, Mark, this sucks. <laughs> Mark, this sucks. <laughs> All right, so, okay, so if you're, if I, okay, I'm going to hire you, and if you're going to give me a LinkedIn makeover, where would we start? Would we start at background or does it depend on what I'm trying to accomplish? Because I'm obviously not going to be looking for a job. Right, exactly. You, you just hit upon the really big thing. And that is everyone has a different goal. Some people are looking for a job. Some people are looking to prospect some people are looking to portray themselves as an expert, as a thought leader within their industry. And with all of these different types of goals, the story that they're going to tell is going to be totally different, right? And, and so the first thing we always do is we try to figure out, okay, what is your goal? What are you trying to say? What, what, why are you on LinkedIn and what do you hope to accomplish? And once, once we figure that out, then you can write very specifically, very strategically towards that goal. Right. Yeah, but what if I have two goals? What if I want to sell land and I want to be a thought leader in land investing? So in that situation, you're, you're going to want to try to weave those two points together. And that's not hard to do. Um, but you want to be very clear. Okay, these are the two areas that I want to go after. Um, and, and then you can get closer to that goal. It's just typically what happens is, and this is what I had done years and years ago, back when I signed up in 2005, I looked at that profile. It looked a little bit like my resume. So I opened up my dull, dry, out-of-date resume, and I just started copying the fields in. And, you know, when it said, what is your experience? I just answered the question here. I worked here. I did this. And this is what I did. Well, you know, your, your LinkedIn profile isn't your resume. You know, your resume is just your professional past. It's what you've done. I, I like to think of your LinkedIn profile as your career future. It's, it's who you are. It's how you help people. And so, you know, what you want to do is really figure out what your goal is. And then you want to write towards it and really think in terms of that target audience. What do they need to hear? And then once you you have that idea in mind, you also want to think in terms of your keywords because LinkedIn is a database and it's, it's a database that people query and people might not know, Mark, who you are, but they might know that they need help with, you know, raw land development. And that might be the terms that they put into the search engine. But if those words aren't in your profile, you will never get found. Right, right. Okay, so let's say that, you know, I want to help you know, professional people get out of what we call solo economic dependency, right? Okay. So my life's mission is to help people build up their passive income to the point where their passive income exceeds their fixed expenses and then they have total financial freedom and they can go and do whatever they want to do in life. And mm -hmm. I'm going to make the argument that raw land is the best way to accomplish that because we don't have to deal with any renters, we don't have to deal with renovations, we don't have to deal with rodents. I mean, it's just an easy asset to maintain versus, say, apartments or single-family homes or whatever you want to so, say in real estate, right? So, so in that in that regard, you'd want to write a profile, you know, that that talked about, you know, what a person, you know, are they looking for passive forms of income? Are they doing these things, and and how can this help, and and how does it work? But you know, the one thing that that hits me here, Mark, is. You know, with LinkedIn, it's, it's so much more than just a profile, and it really is a platform. And so what I would suggest is what you really need to do is, is educate people, because that's, that's one of the things. How many people recognize what you just said, that, you know, hey, you can actually have 
you know, passive forms of income um, that exceed what you're doing every day when you trade your 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 time for money. Right. Um, and I think very few people, when they do think of real estate, they they don't think in terms of the the, the raw land. I mean, I think most people think in terms of houses or or buildings, and and who can who could even bother affording that or even put the time in that it you know it it needs. And so in that regard, I almost feel that you would do very well with two other areas of LinkedIn. And the one area is the status updates. It's on the home page, and it's very much like Facebook. And I'm going way, to the home page right now. Yeah. So if you click on the home page. I see it. I see share an update. <laughs> there you go. You share an update. And this is where you want to educate. This is where you want to inspire. This is where you want to add value. I am not, I am not a fan of people who are like, hey, you want to learn about uh, raw land? Click here. That's, that's not educating. <laughs> that's just, that's being an obnoxious marketer. Um, but, <laughs> but if if you could you know write articles and and you know share little tidbits and 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 really give an idea of what the what the the magnitude of this and and how how it could help a person and you do it consistently um you could really get people interested and there's another aspect to this status updates and it's something that LinkedIn just recently added just over the summer in fact and it's their publishing platform and a lot of people struggle because they want to write blogs, but how do you get a blog? How do you open? How do you buy a domain? How do you get that WordPress set up? You know, it's it's just too much for a lot of people. Well, with with LinkedIn, there's the publishing platform, so you can write posts on LinkedIn that are attached to your LinkedIn profile, and you get a built-in following. All those people that you've been fo that have followed you, that have connected with you, who are first-degree connections within your LinkedIn network. They, they're going to get notified when you post something. And these posts can be over 500 words. So you can actually get, it's, it's no longer like 140 characters and that's it. You can actually get into, you know, build a little bit more depth into these articles. Um, and, and you have that built-in audience and people can comment and they can share. And before you know it, your, your article can really expand far beyond just your LinkedIn network into other people's networks as well. Interesting. That's fantastic. Okay. So, I, you know what? I'm finally getting the, the LinkedIn makeover. I'm starting to understand it. <laughs> good, good, good. The, the, the other thing a lot of times people talk about when, they, when, when, I, you know, when I talk to them about LinkedIn, I think the number one question I always get is, so should I connect with everyone? <laughs> you know, I get people who, who want to connect with me, but I don't know them. Do I, do I connect with them or don't I? This is so funny because I was arguing with... Uh, Duran, uh, my buddy, who uh, was saying to me, he won't accept anybody into his network because he doesn't know them. I'm like, I'm like, Duran, it's like going to a party and saying, no, and I'm not going to talk to you. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It's, it's, it's really, it's kind of crazy. I, I don't know why people aren't, you know, are so hesitant to to connect, especially if a person's wanting to connect with you. You know, you check out their profile. If they look professional, if they look like they're operating on the up and up, of course, why not? Hit, hit, hit accept, accept them into, their ne into your network. Now, I mean, if they're from Nigeria and they want to, uh, you know, put a large amount of money into your bank account, you know, in that situation, I think it's okay to, to say no. I think I'll pass on this one. Um, but, you know, I think most people are on LinkedIn. They, they want to connect, and I don't think there's anything wrong with connecting. Okay, so help me with this. Help me reconcile this because... This is something I've, been, I've struggled with since day one on social media. Mm -hmm. I'm a big believer in if you can't measure it, you can't manage it, right? Mm -hmm. How can I measure my social media efforts? So, and I certainly, like for my business, I don't think Twitter makes any sense for me. You might okay. disagree, but I think for, for my business, being a thought leader makes a lot of sense on LinkedIn and maybe Facebook, but certainly LinkedIn and, may, and Google Plus, right? Mm -hmm. So, but how do I, how much time should I be spending on this? And is, you know, what's, yeah, what's sort of I, your philosophy? Like, you know, at the end of the day, like, you know, what's going to put money in my bank account is selling land. Mm -hmm. Well, with, with LinkedIn, uh, you know, I think... A lot of people look at it and they're like, okay, how much time should I spend on it? I, I never look at it in terms of that. I look at it as a tool. 
And as a tool, it's something that is on my computer, it's on my smartphone, and I, I access it when I need it. And it's it's one of those things where it just becomes a it should become just a, a part of your your daily process. It's something that you want to think in terms of. I'm always building my network, so everyone that I meet, the people that I, I interact with, I'm going to connect with on LinkedIn, and it just make it a part of just the natural everyday function that you have. You eat breakfast, you check your email, <laughs> you make sure you connect with people on LinkedIn. Um, and as you find interesting things and you, you share it and certainly you might want to, you know, go so far as to have a content schedule, but I think for most users, it's, it's not necessary. Um, so you, but, you, you don't recommend me leveraging my time and hiring a social media manager. You, you know, it, it depends, you know, Mark, probably for you and what you're doing, you, it probably would be a, a good thing for you to do. I mean, I'm going to assume the goals that you have, you might need to. Um, but for most everyday users, I, I don't think it's necessary. Um, it's nice to keep these things if, if, if you have the time. you know. And that's the one thing that a lot of people forget with, with social media. You know, yes, it's free, but your time isn't free. And, you know, but if you, if you look at it as a tool... And you know you research people. You know you're being researched. You 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 go on there. You you read it. You know with your morning cup of coffee. You comment. You you share. You like things. And you just par- make it part of your life. It's it really becomes something that you're doing because y- you enjoy it. And when you do, that's that's when you start to reap rewards. It's it's when you look at it and you're like, okay, how can I get on LinkedIn and just sell? Uh, you're never really going to have any success. <laughs> but if- okay, so so in social media, especially in LinkedIn, your your attitude needs to be: How can I add value? How can I inspire? How can I educate? How can I help? How can I help? How can I inspire? How can I educate? It's not how can I sell more land. Right. Okay. So, given that, right, and given that I have a certain niche expertise. Is it okay for me to talk about, like, I'm going to go skiing next week and comment about that? Is it, or not, do you not, want to go outside uh, Unfortunately, of that? not on LinkedIn. Not on LinkedIn, okay. You can, you can do that on Facebook. You could do that on Twitter. But with LinkedIn, it still it has a very narrow focus. And so when you're on LinkedIn, you're talking about your profession, your business, your career, uh, you're talking about your industry, you are not talking about your cat, you're not talking about <laughs> the movies or TV, um, which in a way, I, I've always, that's one of the things that I think a lot of people do like about LinkedIn is a lot of people who are very private and, and they feel almost like, ooh, if I go on Facebook, you know, I'm going to be, you know, assaulted by, you know, kids playing soccer and football team scores whereas with LinkedIn LinkedIn is it has a very narrow focus it's it's really about your industry it's about your career it's about what you do and how you help people as it relates to business and that's it that's okay that's really important because you can see how how much time I spend in LinkedIn <laughs> I, I really I mean honestly I joined some groups right and I really don't spend a lot of time at all on social media and I think I'm really missing out, and I think my attitude has been completely wrong the entire time because I just want to get to the chase. I want to be like, look, you know, you want to buy land or not, you know? I mean, and 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 typically, I mean, I always I always say with you know with social media, it's it's no different than the real world. I mean, you'd never walk up to a person and say, "Hey, you want to buy some raw land?" They'd be like, "No, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you're talking about. Why would I want to buy anything from you?" And the same thing goes with with social media. I mean, I mean, I, I know in some situations it absolutely, you know, it can work. You know, you know, it, especially if you have a relationship with people. But I'm I'm just talking about that cold. Let's let's just avalanche people with an offer. Um, you know, it it. You know, it doesn't work very well. But when you're on LinkedIn and, and you're on it and you're helping people and you're adding value, you're giving information, it's it's not a quick sale by any means. But if you spend time and you really put effort into it, um, what you f- will find is things turn around and, and people do want to work with you because they trust you. And, and 
you know, they, they feel that you've given them um, information and help and, and, and they want to come to you because you're someone that um, can offer them help and, and at that point they will want to buy. You know, I think Jeffrey Gittimer has, you know, said it best. Uh, he, he says, and you might even know this quote, but people hate to be sold, but they love to buy. And, and I, I feel that's very, very true. That is true. Yeah, I, I love that. So, okay, let's talk a little bit about the book. Okay. What's going on in this book, Donna? Uh, um, my, my LinkedIn makeover, Professional Secrets to a Powerful LinkedIn Profile. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, why, okay, I'm definitely going to buy the book, but why would I buy the book? Like, I'm, I'm a huge believer in that my most precious resource mm -hmm. is my time, right? Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't I just hire you and, and just, you know, get up and running and really get this yeah. LinkedIn... And and quite honestly, Mark, most, most people do. I mean, a lot of people think, oh, how, how hard can it be? I'm, I'm going to just, I'll get her book, I'll spend the 10 bucks, and I'll just do it myself. And then before they know it, they've cleaned out their, their cabinets, and they're, they're working on cleaning out their gr garage, because everything is, is <laughs> it becomes much more interactive than actually sitting down and writing about themselves. And, and that's really the, the thing, the key. It's, it's hard to write about yourself. And it's, it's even harder to really see your own strengths and abilities because you sit so close. Um, and so it does actually make sense to work with someone. And, and that's why I, I created my, my company is to help people. It's to really, you know, help them, give them that, that hand and, and interview them, talk to them, find out what it is that you do, and then have a professional writer write that profile for them. Um, and, and so, you know, we talk to you, we understand who you are, and then we write it for you. Um, and, and that by far is the, the best use of time. Um, but there are still a lot of people who want to try to do it themselves. And, uh, and I, I tried to lay out every single secret, every single item that I've, I've discovered in my book, and it's there. And if you want to do it yourself, it's, uh, it's, it's certainly available. And, uh, and I like to think that it's, it's kind of funny as well. I try to throw in a lot of jokes and make it as entertaining as possible. <laughs> All right, well, great, great. Okay, so, um, well, I mean, this is just a no-brainer for me. Like, as soon as we hang up with the podcast, I'm going to get going on this um, and hire you. But now, now when I hire you, though, like, what am I getting? Am I get, am I am I getting you, or am I getting a LinkedIn coach, or how does that work? It, well, I, I will tell you in the very beginning, you would have gotten me, um, but then my business exploded, and it became absolutely absolutely impossible for me to work with everyone. And so what I did is I, I started to look around and I, I found people who who I admired, people that, that challenged me, people that I thought were fantastic and I brought them on board and I taught them what I know regarding LinkedIn profiles and, um, and they are now my branding specialists. I have, oh my goodness, almost 20 now. And when you when you work with us, I'm still your partner, and I'm going to make sure that you're very very happy and that your you, everything that you need is there. But you'll be working directly with a branding specialist who will interview you, who will write the profile for you, and will will review it and make any edits and answer any questions that you have. So it's a real end to end process, and it's very consultative, and and uh, we're there for you. So they're going to save me a lot of time, which oh yeah, is going to save me a lot of money, and then. And then are they going to help me, like, okay, Mark, this is what you need to be doing on LinkedIn. This is how many times you should post. Like, I've got, you know, I've got YouTube videos, my coffee talk videos. I've got the podcast. Um, well, you've got the content. Now you just got to put it out there. You got to unleash it on the LinkedIn public. Right, right. But how do I do that without seeming, you know, like the sales guy? I, I yeah, I think that's more of a conversation we would have, but... I mean, I always think in terms of, you know, get yourself Hootsuite, start looking at that content schedule, and uh, you, you want to just, again, just, you know, look at it, phrase it in a manner that, that, gets, that lets people realize that you're there to help and you're, you're sharing information. Okay, so I, you'll, you'll, you'll stop me from being completely obnoxious on LinkedIn. We will, we will certainly try. That's <laughs> no, no promises. Okay. <laughs> no promises. <laughs> All right, well, great, great. All right, well, this is the point in the podcast that I absolutely love because hopefully I'm going to make you sweat. I'm going to put you on the spot. I'm going to ask right. you, what is your tip of the week? What is something, where's something like a resource or a book or something that we can go, obviously not your just book, your book, because mm -hmm. we talked about it, but 
Um, where can we go to learn something actionable that we can take right now to leverage uh, LinkedIn and the in that profile and, and really get going? Sure. Well, I, 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 of course, have to suggest my LinkedIn headline generator because I, I've always believed that right next to the profile picture, the LinkedIn headline is one of the most important parts of your LinkedIn profile. It's what really gets people interested and it makes them want to learn more and it makes them want to click to open up your profile so you get more of those views. And so my LinkedIn headline generator, you can download it free of charge, linkedin-makeover.com. And it's a, it's a step-by-step guide. Um, and in five minutes flat, you'll have a sexy, marketable, interesting, unique LinkedIn headline uh, that you can immediately upload to LinkedIn and uh, people will start clicking to learn more. I love it. I love it. Okay, so I go to linkedin-makeover.com. Mm-hmm. And then it's just, is it on that front page or do I go to free resources? Uh, it is, it is on the front page on the right hand sidebar. Um, and if for some reason you're not seeing it right now, I think I, I, it, it should be there. If it's not there right now, it'll be there in a few minutes. Um, but it is a, uh, it's just a little picture of a, of a book, uh, an ebook and you just click it. You just put in your, your, your email, hit send and, uh, we'll send it to you. All right. Great. Well, this is fantastic. My, I've got two tips of the week, and um, my tip of the week is obviously going to go to, to be you know go to LinkedIn-makeover.com because I think it's really important, and I think it's important that you leverage your time and don't waste time, and just you know start hiring Donna, but and and her team, just get going and, and do it because what's what's the percentage of people that that make over hundred thousand on LinkedIn? Forty percent. Oh, on, on LinkedIn, I think we're well over 300 million <laughs> users on LinkedIn. Yeah, but the demographic, like they're professionals, like they make over $100,000. Oh, yeah, 40, yeah four, I'm sorry, 40% make over 100, 100 grand. Yeah, that's, and there's 300,000 people there. Wow. I mean, I was, wait, 300, no, 300 million. Million, yeah. Million. That's a, crazy. That's a big country. That's uh, a little smaller than the U.S., just a little bit. Um, that's crazy. Okay, so... That's my first tip of the week. My second tip of the week, and I, Donna, check this out. It's ope.nr. Ope.nr. And basically what it is, is let's say you found a, a great article that you want to share, and you drop that URL into their converter, and then they create uh, what they call an opener window, and they add your message and a call to action that you want to appear on the page along with the article. Right? So basically what you share then comes back to your site. What do you think of that? Wait, give me give me that address again because I'm not finding it. Here, I'm gonna I'm gonna send it to you in Skype here. Hold on. O P E dot N R. I'm gonna instant message you. Oh I got it. Yo, you got it? Okay. What do you think? Interesting. I can't wait to play with this. Yeah, and it's got a free, um, I mean, here, well, here, let's go to pricing. Um, it's 10 links per day, one polar form per day, one image per day, one profile, one user. That's free. That's a pretty good free plan, don't you think? Oh, that ain't bad at all. It's not bad, right? Um, I don't know how many, how many links per day you would suggest that you share on LinkedIn, but I would think 10 links per day would be pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I typically, I myself now, again, I'm I'm trying to take over the world, <laughs> so I share about 15 a day, <laughs> but but 10 links, I mean, if, if you're doing that, you're doing a lot, so that's that's fantastic. All right, great, great. Well, Donna Serdula, thank you so much for uh, coming on the Land Geek Podcast. I mean, I know it's not NBC, but look... You know. Hey, I'm I am happy to be here. This was a fun interview. Thank you so much. I I appreciate it. Well, I really appreciate you coming on. And then, if you wouldn't mind, if you have time, uh, just hang with me for two minutes after the podcast because I want to get started and, and supercharge my LinkedIn profile, and then show everybody in my community, hey, look, look how cool I am now on LinkedIn. Awesome. You know, go from 
uh, a profile that sucks to you know a thought expert in all things land. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to the transformation. So anyways, uh, if, for everybody listening, I want to thank everyone for listening. If you want to learn more, please go to www.thelandgeek.com. Download for free the Passive Income Blueprint. Get the ebook How to Avoid the Three Fatal Land Buying Mistakes. And of course, get this always informative and engaging podcast delivered each week to your email inbox. And look, give me some love. Go to FrontierPropertiesUSA.com. Invest in some wholesale land. Let us know how we're doing. Please leave a comment on iTunes. I really appreciate it. If you send me an email telling me that you left a comment, I'll go ahead and get you the $97 Passive Income Launch Kit for free as a thank you. Anyways, this is Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek. Donna, are we good? Awesome. Thank you so much. Will you come back? I will always come back. Absolutely. All right. Fantastic. All right. Well, I want to thank everybody. And uh, thanks again, Donna. We'll see everybody next week. Thank you for listening to another episode of The Land Geek. Join us next time for more tips, secrets, and information that will help you succeed. Stay connected with The Land Geek on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelandgeek.